cool now it iterates forever and look you can see it changing all the words and it looks like one worked so let's see this wallet let's hope it has some money in there your private key on metamask is stored with a permutation of 12 random letters from this list of 2048 letters supposedly suppose you created a metamask wallet and this was your seed word here these first 12 words let's say you stored this these seed words on a piece of paper but you felt like it wasn't secure enough so to increase your security you did the following you took the 12 words and you randomized their order and stored them on one piece of paper on a second piece of paper you stored the key to the actual order of the words for example notice that above corresponds to the fifth word in the sequence above so in order to unlock your metamask wallet using the seed phrase you need to have access to both pages if you just had access to one page for example page two you'd have no idea what to do and if you just had access to page one you would know the combination of words required but you wouldn't know the exact permutation how many possible permutations are there if you had the 12 words but you didn't know their order 12 factorial which is 479 million different combinations suppose you lost your second page i'm going to try to brute force all the permutations of a 12 word seed phrase to start we're going to import these five libraries and you have to make sure that you have selenium installed on your computer next we're going to define the seed words in a dictionary the order here doesn't matter since we don't know the correct order. All right, next you're going to go to your Chrome and you're going to install MetaMask here. And once you have MetaMask installed, you want to go to type in Chrome uh, extensions like this. Chrome colon uh, forward slash forward slash extensions. And you should see your MetaMask wallet here. If you click on developer mode and details, you will see the ID right here. So go to your file explorer, and this is where it is for me. If you go to users, my account, make sure your hidden folders are shown. Go to app data, local, Google, Chrome, user data, default, extensions, and you should be able to match your Chrome ID here to the folder ID right here. Copy this file path and click pack extension. And we're going to finish the file path inside this folder 10.12.1 underscore zero. 10.12.1 underscore zero. Pack extension. Now it already exists, but if it doesn't exist, it will create this CRX file here. Once you have the CRX file, we can define our path here. This path is the exact path to the CRX file that we just created. Now we want to define our options for our web driver. We do that in the following. We add the extension of the path and we define the driver. If we run this file here, it should open up a Chrome file and open up MetaMask. It takes a second to load. And there we go. So now we open MetaMask using our Chrome web driver. Now, despite the fact that the web driver will open to this MetaMask page, when you try to click a button, it I believe it has this tab open instead. So you need to switch to the current tab. The way you switch to the current tab in the program is with this line of code right here. Switch tabs. Driver.switch2.window and then the current window. Next, we need to click the Get Started button. Inspect this element and we're going to copy the X path here. Next, we define the element that we're trying to click, which is the button we just copied here. So element equals driver dot uh, find element by equals by dot X path. And then we define the value to be this right here. and we need to click it so we say dot click and if we run this program now let's see what happens
So now it's you see it click through that and now we need to click through the import wallet button and the agree button. So we do that the exact same way as I described for the first button. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we run this. Boom, now we've gone to this secret recovery phrase section of the wallet. Now it's time to define some important variables. Let's define a count variable to count how many times we entered a password, a seed phrase. And let's define a string, which would be the seed phrase we enter. Let's write a little for loop to populate the string. So for element in seed words test, string append a space, and then uh, seed words test element. So let's remove let's remove the leading white space of the string so string dot strip let's just print the string and see what we get all right so that looked like it worked here we got the string which looks like the 12 words and now we would like to input that into this web page here so i found the easiest way to do that is use the clipboard and copy and paste so for example if we were to do that manually let's take the 12 words here and copy it into the first it will automatically fill each entry with the word so let's tell the program to do that here i copied this function from online copy to clipboard which takes a input uh, string and copies it to the clipboard so let's do that copy to clip and we put the string now we want to paste that in the first text box here. Here, in the same format as the clicking on buttons above, we click on the proper text field, which would be here. And once we do that, we send keys to the element we just clicked on using keys.control plus V, which is a paste function. And that will paste what we copied to clipboard here above. Then we sleep. All right, let's run the program and see if it properly pastes. Boom, so it pasted all the words, and if we look at the words, they're what we have in our string, in our program. So now we use the web driver to enter one singular seed phrase, but we wanna enter all the permutations. So the way we're gonna do that is use a permutation function. So copied from leak code, I got this function here. And basically what this function does is it returns the next permutation in the list. So imagine you have an array like this, one, two, three, four, five. The next permutation it will return is one, two, three, five, four. Basically, it will return the next highest number using only these numbers, but in an array form. The reason we have to do it this way is because if we use like iter tools, it'll create the list first. And because that list is so large for uh, 12 factorial permutations, it will never finish, so we need to input the permutations one at a time. So now that we have this next permutation function, let's see what we can do with it. So we're gonna define an array as one through 12, and each of these corresponds to one of the keywords. So that's why we use a dictionary one through 12 here. The way we're gonna check if a seed phrase is correct is you see on this page, when you enter an incorrect seed phrase, this error appears. So if we just check for this element here, in a try loop, we should be able to know if we get the correct or incorrect C phrase. So copy this path, and we'll use this logic in our while loop. Try accept. We try and see if the error element is there. If it's not there, then we know that we've succeeded. So we can we can end the try loop. and we should print out our seed phrase. Otherwise, increment the count. We set our string back to empty. And now we find the next permutation. Array equals next permutation. And we pass in our array. 
And then now we do for element in array string plus equals space seed or is a test element delete the leading white spaces we do the same logic that we've done up here so we copy it to the clipboard we click back on the text field and then we send the keys to the text field now this should iterate through all the possible permutations let's try it It looks like it raised an exception, which means we found a correct password. So let's see. It returned this. If we paste that in, abandon ability. And let's see. Let's do a random password. So boom, like we just unlocked someone's wallet with zero ETH. Now, obviously, someone made this intentionally. Uh, easy to break into because I mean what's the probability of having the first 12 is like incredibly low so let's do it with one that we know won't work let's try to change a word to ask okay and we'll run it again and look you can see it changing all the words and it looks like one worked so let's see this wallet. Let's hope it has some money in there. Okay, yeah. So um, let's see how many it went through, though. Let's print uh, the string and we'll print count. All right, so it starts iterating through. It finds a password. Let's see what it returned here on the. So look, you can see all the different uh, permutations it's using, and it's iterating in a way that the it changes the ending, the end variables first. So look, I had to go through twenty eight examples before it found a password that worked. Let's see if we can just put in a random word there and run it. Cool, now it iterates forever. So let's let's time this and see how many it can do uh, per second. Okay, so now it's going through. Let's wait till it gets to 100 and start it. All right, there's about 100. And we'll let it run for a couple hundred. All right, so it took 15 seconds to get from 100 to 300. So uh, uh, that's 200 divided by 15. So it does about 13 a second. So let's pause this and do some math. So if it can do 13 a second, that means in one year, it can do about, let's see, 31 million seconds in a year. So it can do about 400 million checks in a year. And given that 12 factorial is around that same number, let's see. It would take about 1.6 years to crack a 12 word seed phrase running on this particular uh, program. Now, one way you can make it faster is you divide up the uh, the permutation space and you run multiple programs at a time. But that's going to be it for the video. Thank you for watching. Bang.